last video we talked about an introduction to exponential functions um, and we, we saw how exponential functions uh, let's get a little graph of that really quick exponential functions are not straight lines they're actually curved lines like this where they increase rapidly uh, what we're going to talk about today is still that but also we're going to see that exponential lines can also decrease rapidly like so but also look at the graphs and how to get the function of that graph uh, written down in a way we can understand it. So the formula for an exponential function is just what, like what we see here. It's f of x, our function notation, takes an input of x. And that's going to equal r to the power of x, where r is the rate of growth or decay, and that's not a bad thing to highlight. Uh, is the rate of growth or decay. And that's going to be the base of our exponent. And then uh, the exponent itself to the power of x is the number of times that the growth or decay is going to occur. So in the example in the last video that we looked at was uh, bacteria. The rate of growth or decay for that was doubling, so the rate was 2. And the number of times that it grows or decays depended on how many hours had passed. I think in the, that example we said how many how many bacteria are they're going to be in 24 hours. And therefore, it doubled uh, 24 times, so it grew 24 times. So that's uh, our formula for exponential functions. Uh, well, this is going to be very helpful uh, for word problems and the like. So let's take a look at our first example. Not a word problem. We're going to take it down a step and just kind of analyze an exponential function. So this one, this example says make a table and graph of the function. So we're going to kind of see some graphs going on and uh, some tables. Let's get my pen here. All right. So we have f of x equals one third to the power of x. So some takeaways really quick is we know that the rate is one third. Uh, it doesn't tell me how many times it's doubling. It's just saying to the power of x. So we're going to get to choose some of that and always choose some negatives. You know, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I like to choose negatives, positives, and zeros for my input, my domain, so I can get a good idea of what the range is doing here. So let's substitute some of that in. And so this first one would be f of negative 2 equals uh, 1 third to the power of x. In this case, x is negative Two. Remember, you can always use your calculator for this, uh, and I recommend that greatly. Um, just type in one third to the power of negative two, and that should spit out nine. Uh, F of negative one will be one third to the power of negative one. That should give you three. F of zero. That should be really familiar. One third to the power of zero. Anything to the power of zero is one. Next one is going to be f of one, which is one third to the power of one. That one should be easy too. Anything to the power of one is just itself. So one third. And then f of two is going to be one third to the power of two. And that's just going to be one third times one third, which is going to be one over nine, or one ninth. We can plot these points down real quick. Um, our first ordered pair is going to be negative 2, comma, 9. Uh, let's see here, negative 2, comma, 9. We have a negative 1, comma, 3. Uh, 0, comma, 1, which should be familiar. Uh, 1, comma, 1 third. And 2, comma, 1 ninth. And those last two points are kind of hard to graph, but we're going to just approximate those. Let's plot these points. Negative 2, comma, 9. It's right here negative 1 comma 3 0 comma 1 1 comma 1 third we're just going to kind of approximate that and 1 comma 1 uh, 2 comma 1 ninth is really is closer to that x-axis you can still see this uh, this decreasing line here but it does look like an exponential line we'll grab a different color here so we still have this uh, curve like we did in our last examples and it still gets really close to the x-axis it's never actually going to touch it, even though my drawing looks like it's going to. 
uh, touch that x-axis and never crosses that x-axis. And we still get that exponential look. In this case, it's decreasing. And so something to kind of talk about here is what's the difference between an increasing and decreasing line just by looking at the function. And it has everything to do with this rate. Uh, if the rate is going to be bigger than one, then that's going to be increasing. But if the R is less than one, something like one third or one half or three fourths, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.6, whatever it may be, that is going to be decreasing. And so that's something um, that's really helpful. If we see the function right off the bat, we can say, well, this is one third to the power of X, therefore I know it's going to de be decreasing. And so I can kind of get an idea of what this graph is going to look like in my head. If it's something like two to the power of X, then I know it's going to be increasing. If it's two to the power of X, two is bigger than one, so that'd be increasing. Okay, let's take a look at a graph this time and see if we can develop a function for it. This example says, what is the function that represents the graph below? So that's the, that's the question for this example. Let me scroll down a little bit here so we can see the whole uh, graph. There we go. So this is increasing. So that tells me something about R. I know R is going to be bigger than one. So it's not going to be one half or one third or one fifth or anything like that. It's going to be bigger than one. Like one, two, three, or four. Uh, it is increasing. It's definitely exponential because it's not a straight line. It has that uh, increasing rapidly kind of look to it. So we know that we are going to be using the exponential function. F of X equals R to the power of X. Okay, so let's see if we can find R really quick. Remember, R is always what we're multiplying by. Let's make a quick table. Our X's and our Y's from these points. This first point here is 0, 1. This next point is 1, 3. And this other point right up here is 2, 9. And let's take a look and analyze this table now. The question is, how do we get from 1 to 3 and then from 3 to 9? Well, it gets from 1 to 3. We can multiply by 3. And then from 3 to 9 is also multiplied by 3. So remember that our ratio, our common ratio, is always what we're multiplying by. So our common ratio is 3. So now we have the function f of x equals r to the power of x. But I know what r is now. So this is going to be f of x equals 3 to the power of x. As simple as that. That would be the function that represents this graph. All right, so that's an increasing line. Let's go take a look at an example of a decreasing line. So very this very uh, quickly, I can see that this is decreasing because it is going down as we are reading this graph from left to right. So the function that represents this graph, we know that the ratio is going to be less than one. It's gonna be probably a fraction of some sort. Uh, so let's make a table and see if we can figure out what that fraction is going to be. Quick table here. I got the point negative 216. Got the point negative 1, 4. And 0, 1. It's always nice to go at least three points to make sure. All right, so this is decreasing. Uh, let's talk about going from 16 to 4. Now a lot of us want to say that's divide by 4, but remember a common ratio is always what you multiply by. It's always what you multiply by. So if we're trying to figure out, well, 16 divided by 4 equals 4, and that's true. We could say divide by 4, but again our ratio is not what we divide by. So we can use what we learned back in 7th grade. We can say that 16, we're going to keep this number, we're going to change divide into multiply, and then we're going to flip the 4. Now, 4 is, a one, uh, is 4 over 1, so flipping that would be 1 over 4. And equals 4. This is the keep, change, flip kind of principle we learn in 7th grade on how to change division problems into multiplication problems. And you can even check this in your calculator. Do 16 times 1 fourth, and you'll get 4. Okay? So instead of divide by 4, we want to do what we're multiplying by, which is multiply by 1 fourth. And just to check one more time, 4 times 1 fourth is also 
one here. So that does work. Our common ratio is one fourth. Okay, and then from our formula, f of x equals r to the power of x. This is, this is gonna give us f of x equals r. In this case, our common ratio is one fourth to the power of x. And that's the function that represents this graph. All right, so just some more key points. We did talk a little bit more about simple exponential growth and decay. Remember that if the rate is bigger than one, it will be growth. If for decay, the rate will be less than one. We saw two examples there. Um, and that's all the common ratio. The common ratio is gonna tell us if it's increasing, if it's decreasing. Uh, I guess exponentially it looks like this or like this. Um, but also tells us how fast it's going to increase or decrease as well okay so some other good things to take away from this lesson is uh, you might notice some things that are going on here in the table uh, you notice that we're still going to the point zero comma one all exponential functions that not have not been shifted up or down will go through that point um, another thing to look at is let's see if we can go back up point here if you look at this other graph here, our increasing one, um, at the point one comma three here, every time you're looking at the point one comma something, you're gonna find the one comma r, which is the common ratio. In this problem, the, the common ratio was three. If we would have continued this table here to one, uh, and did one times one fourth, we would have got one fourth here, so one comma, the common ratio. The common ratio can always be found when x is 1, at least for graphs that are not shifting. So those are some of the takeaways for this lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Leave the comments, or if you're in my class, you can come ask one of your teachers too.